At uh, WCL CD here, we have seen the update of the Empower 10 data. Empower 10 is a randomized phase three study that compare one year of adjuvant atezolizumab uh, versus observation in patient with uh, uh, stage 1b, 2, and 3 non small cell lung cancer after resection. And all the patients receive at least one cycle of chemotherapy. We know that the trial is positive, mainly in the patients with one plus or more PDL1 and LCLC. And what we have seen here is the updated overall survival data. So now we have a follow up of 46 months. It's a bit more than one year uh, compared to the previous data that we have seen. And the good thing is that the survival curves divides more and more with time, suggesting that the benefit of the adjuvant immunotherapy is really something that stay in time compared to chemotherapy where the benefit is really within the five first years. And after five years, there might be some detrimental effect of the chemo because of the late side effect, although it concerns for chemo a very few patients. There are a lot of discussion between the Empower uh, O10 data and the uh, PEARLS uh, study. PEARLS is the adjuvant trial with pembrolizumab. It's also known as Keynote O91. Uh, it's roughly a similar study regarding patient selection. So it's all commerce, age 1B to 3, non small cell lung cancer after resection. And their patients receive either one year of pavolizumab or placebo. Between these two major trials in the field, there are some discrepancies in the subgroups. For the PDL1 negative, for example, there is no benefit for uh, atezolizumab, where there is a benefit for pavolizumab, and a lot of discussion around that. One of my main comments here is that if we remember the Pacific trial with maintenance of valumab after definitive chemorad in stage three non small cell lung cancer, you might remind that for the PDL1 negative, there were no effect of Durvalumab, although in fact, the performance of the control arm in, your, in Pacific for the PDL1 negative was really much higher than expected and much higher than for the PDL1 positive. So at the end, we, we must of all think that the PDL1 negative patients of um, uh, Pacific with Durvalumab uh, had no benefit just because by chance the control arm overperformed. So it would be very interesting in Empower to see the data for the PDL1 negative. In the other way around, for the PDL1 highly positive, the 50 plus, in Power 10 is highly significant, although Keynote 029 is not significant in this population. Uh, we know that uh, the benefit uh, of immunotherapy for this population is really driven by the very, very high expressor, the 90 plus percent PDL1. This is uh, something that we know from uh, the data of uh, single agent pembrolizumab or semiplimab in the uh, metastatic patients. So, there again, would be very interesting to have the breakdown in the high PDL1 between the PDL1 uh, from uh, 50 to 90 percent and the 90 plus, just to see if there is no imbalance. Finally, uh, we treat a micrometastatic disease that we cannot really assess because uh, by definition, this is something we cannot see. Uh, what we can say is that there are some decrepancies between the PDL1 in the resected tumors and the PDL1 of the relapse or the PDL1 of circulating tumor cells. And uh, uh, it's also something that we can have to keep in mind with adjuvant immunotherapy. We treat a disease we cannot see, and the biology of this uh, unseen disease might not be exactly similar to the primary tumor resected, so that the benefit of immunotherapy could be a bit different. I think in that field, the circulating tumor DNA would be a key biomarker to better understand who are the patients that really benefit from an adjuvant treatment.